I'm going to start recording. Piers, could you read the passage, please? Sure. Me'et Adonai Hayata Zot. Great. Uh, Romero, would you like to try? Yes, sir. Me'et Adonai Hayata Zot. That's good. Okay, today we are going to talk about um, the sign of the video. Let me do this. You would like it. I found something. Okay, we are going to talk about video and then review of 30 hair of big verb. I think previously uh, this past big lesson was not really that difficult, but today it's a bit uh, harder. Uh, you will understand that when the third hair is missing, especially when um, the word is attached to a argument, an argument such as a fixed pronoun, then the third hair disappeared. And sometimes it, it, it is replaced by ta and yod. But talking about hirak yod replacement, you would be confused as if you are dealing with uh, hifil form because hirak yod between the second and third root letters is one of the most important indicators of Kifi form. So when you are dealing with third hair verb, you gotta be careful with it today. So that's something that you need to pay attention to. And at the same time, we are going to talk about demonstrative pronoun. And this one is um, becoming important. So yeah, let's do this. I don't wanna just... Uh, uh, summarize everything that we need. We we need to study today. We will just to go uh, for the individual, the each slide. Okay, uh, let me do this. Okay, let's move on to next slide. Okay, here. This is a combination between the DDO marker and then pronomen suffix. So. It is important for us to pay attention to the ending. So we have e, ka, ku, and o, a, nu. Okay. And what else do we have? Need to move it down. Okay. And then for third person, I mean plural form, we have nu, kem, ken, and m, n. So you are supposed to actually memorize this one already. Uh, I think when it comes to second person, I think that's quite obvious because second person has something to do with kaf. As you can see that two MPL is Kaf and mem. Two, M, two FPL has kaf and nun. So if you look at even second person singular, you can see that ka. So what is confusing is first person and third person. So if you can memorize the first person and third person, then we'll be okay. So uh, as you can see, first person singular is E, okay? Why is it E? Because first common singular is I, right? I, I, I am, I. So that's why it's E, A, E, all right? So it's helping. So memorize E ending. And what about First common plural then, how are you going to memorize nu? Actually, nu is quite problematic because nu ending is appearing for uh, other stops, such as a ta ti u tem tem nu, right? Nu, 
So new ending is even for uh, first common plural affix pronoun. And at the same time, this one is pronoun in a suffix. And what else? Apart from it, each one is appearing for third person. So this is quite confusing. So and anyway, we are going to spend a little bit uh, more time for that later. Okay, so new. Do you know we have uh, a student from I think uh, New Zealand. His name is Nu. Nu. Do you know Nu, brother Nu? He's a twin, so that's why it's not I. It's we. So Nu is we, and I E is singular I. Okay, that's helping. And what about the third person? Third person, as you can see, it's O, but it's not only O. We have uh, three other uh, alternative forms. And then I think you already know the type one and type two, and we have alternative form, and we are going to deal with another category, which is called nu, uh, I mean, um, nun suffix form. So we are going to talk about it, I think in lesson 38, if I'm not mistaken, let me see, lesson 38. Um, yeah, I think the importance of this pronominal suffix is going to be dealt with in 38. So just um, uh, try to memorize. So three FSG is Holland. So uh, that's it. As long as you understand this, then we can move on. So this one, what is the significance of this part? As you can see that this is a combination between DDO and pronominal suffix. So when the DDO is attached to a pronominal suffix, then it normally comes with a whole name above alet. And that is how we distinguish it from the epineural article on the preposition at. Do you remember? Because when the preposition at is attached to uh, a preposition, I mean, I mean, uh, no, 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 pronominal suffix, then uh, it looks confusing. That's why you need to remember Holem above alet is the most important indicator for DDO marker. Okay, so that's something that you have to remember. So let me move on to. So next will it ever be? Um, so I can't, so like, will it ever be uh, holem vav, holem plane, or will it always just be like that? Defective? Okay, so you're talking about the possibility of holem plane mm -hmm. for DDO marker at. Yes. Okay, yeah, sometimes it can be happening that way too, but I think a uh, whole length defective is the most important indicator. Okay, when it comes to uh, the distinction between whole length plan and whole length defective, I think you need to be really careful. Uh, actually, when you he, when he, when he call defective writing, it describes the symptom that uh, plan writing becomes defect defective writing. So the long vowel pointing becomes the short vowel pointing. That is called defective writing. So technically speaking, a defective writing doesn't refer to any kind of symptom that, you know, whole planet becomes whole and defective and the whole defective uh, becomes whole and planet. But it happens, you know, many times. So I want you to be flexible, okay? So after learning, you know, it should be whole lamp planet, and sometimes yeah. you can see whole lamp defective. And then when we are expecting whole lamp defective, and all of a sudden whole lamp planet just takes place. It's not only about whole lamp, but something like even Shurek. You know, we have learned Shurek. And then do you remember Kibut? Kibut? You know, the three dots going a little bit down to the left, right side. That isn't that even has U sound. So whole uh, shurek even can be appearing in the form of uh, kibbutz, but they have same sound, which is u. So as long as it has similar sound, then you can perhaps think about those possibilities. So we need to be really flexible. And interestingly, you know, we didn't have bow pointing at all. You know, when the Bible was uh, copied, so it is a conventional way of um, putting the sounds later. So anyway, so bow point is not really important I, you know, in terms of a manuscript, but we need to know how to read it. Um, 
Yeah, so thank you, Pierce, for your question. Let me move on. Okay, let's read. Professor? Yes? Uh, never mind. The, uh, the, the last, the third and the second to the last, they have a setting. So those two are the exceptions. They, are they always set under the LF? So what is your question again? You're talking about what? 2NP and 2FP, they're not foreign, they're setting under, there's no hole in there, right? Yeah, you're right. So we cannot always expect a hole in. I think this one was dealt with before. So 2NPL, 2FPL um, has no hole in. Okay, so anyway, and plus the context will also help you to see the difference between DDO and then preposition at as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, move on. As I said, today's lesson has something to do with the importance of third hair. Okay, let's look at this. The, the ordinary form of the third hair bana, we have a bana. And then this one is a strong verb paka. So having a fixed form, this is what we are expecting actually at the end. So a uh, ta to T utemten nu. Ata to T U tem ten nu. But the thing is, this third he is not strong enough when it comes with this specific optics pronoun. So now, when we are supposed to have a, actually, the third he is replaced by ta. Only three F S G. Because as you can see that he and he, we, we are supposed to have two he's there. So it's not really in a common. It's not uh, possible for the Hebrew word to have two identical letters. So he, the, the third he component is replaced by ta. But what about these two F S G, two M S G? Actually, 2MSG is uh, supposed to have ta ending, right? Nothing a uh, ta. What it happened? So when the he, third day is attached to this ta ending, then he is not strong enough to be remaining. So he disappears, and then it is compensated by the yod. So as you can see that hirek yod, yod, and then hirek yod, hirek yod. You can see hirek yod many times. So you can be easily tempted to see the possibility of hirek, a uh, uh stem. But unfortunately, we do not have preformative he in the beginning. So in this case, although we have hirek yod, you know, uh, after the second root letter, we are not supposed to be tempted to put a uh, hip is them, okay? Since we don't have preformative he. Is that clear? So this is something that you have to remember. Okay, so pay attention to those hirek yod. Hirek yod. And look at this. Um, this new ending is quite confusing too. As I said, nu is what? It's a pronoun a suffix indicating one C P L, which means we, okay? And it appears here. So you are not supposed to be confused as if this one is uh, referring to one C P L of uh, pronoun a suffix, but this one is, so I think when you have a verb, of which the last uh, root letter is nun, then you gotta be careful because the last nun can be attached to u ending. And then it ends up becoming nu sound. Uh, in lesson 38, we are going to deal with uh, pronominal suffixes attached to verbs. One more time. Pronominal suffix normally come together with a preposition or noun. Do you remember this? But when we are talking about um, infinitive construct, 
like be and ke. And how did we translate it? We translate it with when. And then when it comes to the real subject, normally the real subject follows the infinitive construct. But sometimes without having the real subject as an independent uh, word, you can see pronominal suffix attached to the infinitive construct form. Do you remember this? There was a case that um, pronominal suffix was attached to the direct verb of infinitive construct. And that uh, pronominal suffix indicates the real subject. So there are two cases for us to have um, identified the subject for independent, uh, in infinitive construct. So what I'm trying to say is uh, in, uh, pronominal suffix can be attached to a verb. So now, when it comes to the presence of nu at the end of a word, then it's becoming harder because of those you know, possibilities. I hope you are understanding me. Okay, anyway, so when you have a um, verb of which third component is nun, then you will be confused. Even having uh, three CPR of fixed form, then you will need to discern whether this one is three CPL U ending together with the noon or new pronomina suffix. We are going to talk about it later, but anyway, you will understand what I'm saying. So I'm just telling you the all the possibility. So anyway, what is important here is that um, you need to pay attention to the fact that the third he is missing and then it is replaced by tav or hirek yod, okay? So tab appears only for three F S T. Yeah, so here, as you can see that tab is appearing, okay? To replace, okay, okay only for three F S T. Okay, let me move on. So, hayeta is what we have in our um, passage again. Let's go back to today's passage again. Then, as you can see, that um, we have hayata here. So, this is the main verb. Okay. And then, what about then? Me et. Me et. Anything that you can recognize? We're going to talk about it later, okay? So this is another combination uh, between two, two components there. But anyway, uh, let's look at this. This one is supposed to be haya, but the third has it replaced by tab. Why? Because of this specific optic pronoun indicating three F SG. So you need to know how to see uh, what PGN and what affix pronoun we have. So it's nothing new because as I already explained, the third hair is supposed to be replaced by top when it is attached to uh, three FSG affix form. So let's go back to... Um, Sorry, uh, I need to go back. Okay. Uh, all right, let's do this. Hayata. Okay, what is the root? Ha? Yeah. Hey, you do it. Right, good. Stand. Car. Car. Because as I said, it cannot be uh, PL nor HFL. In case of a fixed form, then definitely we are going to have preformative HE and at, at the same time, Dagesh uh, Forte. So in this case, it's not really difficult to discern the right stem. What about form? 
affix. Right, affix. PGN. Three PSG. Right, because of R ending. Special feature. None. None. Meaning. Uh, affix form without verb recursive should be translated in the past tense. So, three uh -huh. FSG is what she. Okay. And she or been. sometimes even it can uh, refer to it. So, three FSG, she, and then what is the meaning of Haya? B. Yeah, B. B. So, was or become so became okay my handwriting is getting better when i write it on the pad okay all right so i i think you don't have any question here let me move on uh also we have demonstrative pronoun so i wanted you to recite this before Okay, let's do it one more time. Okay, Come on, you can do it. I can see that Hebrew people are alive right now. All right, so Jeju to Hui, That's it. So it means this, this, that, that, is this, those, those. But as you know that, um, do you remember who he is he? I think it, this one was asked by, um, I mean, commented by Amos long time ago in Hebrew one. Looking at who he, it can be either, uh, what is it? This uh, independent, what is it? Uh, Demonstrative pronoun at the same time IPP, independent personal pronoun, because who means he, like who is he and he is she. Do you remember? So who refers to things. So that or he. He refers that, feminine that or she. So uh, this is what you need to bear in mind as well. Then let's move on. Okay, here, as you can see, uh, I think uh, we need to do this. I thought that we, we would have one slide talking about this. Let, let's deal with this. Okay, if this one is a DDO marker, then, um, there is no reason for this one. I, I, I think this one is something to do with the context as well. Talking about at, actually this one can be DDO at and preposition at. I don't want to even ignore uh, the possibility of having uh, DDO marker. But anyway, uh, as you can see, this one is, I think probably you are not familiar with this because this one is supposed to be min. But this noon is, some, is it supposed to be assimilated. And then there should be a compensation of dagesh forte. But dagesh forte cannot be appearing in a guttural letter, which is alep here. So in this case, when the noon cannot be assimilated, there should be compensation. So this hirek becomes jere. So this one is min, preposition min. And at the same time, this one is, uh, what is it? Preposition at referring to with. So the transliteration is from with the Lord will be the right uh, translation. But if you think this one should be DDO marker, then I don't want to say you are wrong, but you need to present a strong evidence or clue by which you can argue that. Um, reading the uh, given passage, I think the context is clearly indicating uh, with. So I think in this case, we are not uh, 
we don't have quite uh, difficulties. So, what is the translation? The return translation is from with the Lord, this happened. Talking about even the last phrase, how, how is that that we, you know, this becomes the subject? In fact, this one is indicating 3FSG. The subject should be singular feminist, uh, singular, I uh, know, third person feminist, singular. And then you know this one is a feminine, je jot, who he. So je jot. Je is masculine singular, and jot is feminine singular. So jot means this, but not simple this, but feminine this. So this one is the real subject of this. So the literal translation is from which the Lord is happened. Well, this was what this became. So this is the Lord's doing KJV and then NIV, the Lord has done this. But literal translation is from with the Lord this happened. Now, what is the significance of having this phrase in the beginning? If you want to translate it, like this, then could it be like, you know, this happened from with the Lord, right? But the order is not in a hayeta jot me et adonai. So the author is always trying to put the important words in the beginning of a phrase. So now you can see that even me'et adunai is intentionally emphasized. So the author is indicating that it is the Lord. Okay, it is from the Lord. It is with the Lord that this happened. Okay, so even this tiny, you know, lesson can be a kind of important, you know, stuff to highlight in your preaching. Okay. So the author intention, intentionally highlights it. Okay, that is the reason why you need to study biblical language, you know, to see the difference between uh, Hebrew or Greek Bible and English translation. Let me move on. Exercise in the following words, identify each yod or vav as a consonant or vowel letter. I think this is not important. It's not appearing in your final exam. And it's just, uh, what, is the, what is the point of distinguish, I mean, uh, recognize vowel point and consonant? I think it's okay. I think you will be okay. No need to. Um, let me move on to another lesson. 38, okay, lesson 38. Oh, yes. Uh, Piers. Uh, no, the Piers. Uh, Pinhas, can you read lesson 38? Is there a uh, Vaika Hefu uh, Shaol uh, Bayom Bayom Hafu Velo? Net uh, uh, Lashub Beit Abib. Thank you. Uh, Sharon, would you like to try? Yeah. Baikahehu, a shaul, payom, hahu, bello. Ne ta netano la shubu peit abibu. All right, thank you. Um, lesson thirty eight is about uh, verb suffix. As I said, pronominal suffix can be attached to verb. So here we call it verb. Surface. 
And uh, I think this is not new. This bar indicates two components, preposition the and the definite article he. So when those two components are put together, and then it is abbreviated to ba, not be ha. Okay. So this pata under the be uh, signifies the presence of definite article he. Uh, I think this is not new. And today, though, we, we will also talk about infinitive control hello verb. Okay, let's uh, let's deal with this. Um, let me ask you this question. As you can see here, this is a verb. I think you can easily recognize this as a verb. Okay, let me ask you this question. I think, uh, let me go to... Uh, Hey, Amos, can you help us to do this? Uh, why do you think this is a verb? Oh, why do I think this is a verb? Um, number one, I have the, you know, like the uh, vav, pata, and yo, this looks like a um, pre prefix, sorry, um, vav conversive. Right, you're saying this is a quite unique a component to be acknowledged as um, important thing that is normally attached to the verb, Bob conversive, and you're right. This one is Bob conversive, and then what can you see there? What about root letters? Root letters. Okay. Um, I, yes. Yeah, go ahead. um this to me um i would like to say it is all right that's why it is important for us to uh learn today's lesson in fact this who ending is another form of pronominal suffix indicating three f a uh, three m s g so now it's, it's quite obvious that we, we are confused because after removing, you know, non root letters, things that are, you know, likely non root letters, then you will remove Bob Converse and U ending, right? And then we have only three components and you're right, uh, Amos, you're supposed to put, uh, how can I pronounce it? Aka, you know, but uh, there was no such vocabulary that we have memorized. In this case, um, the ending, who, is a specific ending, pronoun and suffix. We are going to talk about this one later. So I'm telling you that this who is not a root letter, and you remove this, then can you still see anything there? And then it should be uh, le kach. Yes, you're right. Me... Yes. It's uh, lakak normally follows first noon verb pattern. That's why it, it is taking assimilation noon in the beginning, but it is lakak. So you are, you're right. This one is lakak. And Amos, can you just continue? And what about stem? Stem. Uh, this is cow. Yes. You. You, you guys were confused. And what if the, I mean, uh, what about the possibility of a PS10? Because the cough, cough is the second, you know, middle loop later, and it is taking baggage. Then how can you see that um, this one must be car? What about PL? Because it is also taking baggage. But I told you, if you have uh, assimilation, uh, then you need to always prioritize the possibility of first noon. It's not, um, it's a hard, it can be a hardly uh, acknowledged as a PS stem. Uh, in order for a PS stem to be appearing, in fact, especially for the first noon book, I think the first noon will not be assimilated if that word is used in the PS stem. So that's why I'm always saying if you see, the first noon disappears 
and you see the Dagesh, I mean, assimilation, Dagesh Purte, then it must be, most likely, uh, generally speaking, it is past uh, then and just assimilation. Okay, so let's move on. Hi, and then. Um, professor, can I say something? Yeah. Um, based on the, the verb chart you gave us, like mm -hmm. the PL sum only has strong verb, third he, and middle gutter and resh. Mm -hmm. So first yod, first guttural, first noon, and how, how do these four different types of verbs don't have PL stem? No, actually, it's not. Uh, the reason why we don't have a PL stem is it's not because we don't have any case for that. But there are some cases that I was also wondering about this, and then I was double checking with um, other OT, you know, professional uh, scholars, and then I do check uh, this. But we do have some cases like first noon verb is used in the PSTEM. So even those words can be used in the PSTEM, but it's not really common. That's why you know I think it's it's not indicated there. But the fact that we don't have a specific chart for first noon verb and PS them doesn't indicate that we are not going to have any case in the Bible. Okay, Amos. Thank you for the notice. But anyway, so let's just continue. If we don't have any further question, Amos. Okay. okay then so what about is... uh, form? Form. This is a prefix. Okay. Prefix. Move uh, on. 3MSG. 3MSG. Yeah, it's good. Because as I said, who is not a, pro, a fixed pronoun, but pronoun in a suffix attached to a verb. Okay, move on. The, this is uh, verb conversive. Mm -hmm. Conversive. And he received. All right. So since I told you this one is pronoun in suffix, then you need to indicate this one. We, although we don't know what PGN it is, but I'm going to tell you that this one three M S G pronominal pronominal suffix. Okay. okay. So you need to include this one. And then you said what? And he received. He received. Yeah, or take mm -hmm. or took. So whatever you like. Okay. So that's it. Uh, what else? Okay, let's talk about this. Ami. Can you analyze yes, this one? Hmm. Put letters. Shu. Uh, Shu. Okay. Move on. Uh, Stand. Car. Car. Form. Affix. Is this affix? Ah, uh, infinitive construct. Why do you think this one is the infinitive construct? Ah, uh, lamet. Okay, number one, lamet. And what about the indicators of uh, the verb apart from the preposition? What, what indicator do you have? For hollow above infinity control, and what do you expect? If you have your verb chart, you need to go to your verb chart again. In fact, when it comes to a hollow verb, if you see the hollow verb as identical as its lexicon form, like shoe, ball, you know, kum, and that's a string, it's not supposed to be even. Um, a fixed form, even it's not supposed to be appearing in the in the prefix form. It is already something special. So what is it? Uh, let me show you the verb chart again. I think I have the verb chart here. Uh, let me see. Okay. Oh uh, no. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is our verb chart, and we need to go to the hollow verb. Where is it? Oh, first yod, first 
Moon, Middle Got Troll, and this one is Hollow Bob. So as you can see, a fixed form for hollow bob like this, kam, ba, sam, met. As I said, um, bo, and sim, mut, those things are not appearing as identical as that's um, their lexicon form. If you look at Um, even prefix form, it's possible, but when they are coming together with the Bob conversive, then normally the middle component uh, changes. Look at this imperative form, as you can see here, 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 they are appearing as identical as the lexicon form. So, kum is kum, bo is bo, sim is sim. So when you have the identical form of hollow bobs, then they should be what? Infinitive construct or imperative form. As you can see that this comb is appearing for imperative and infinitive construct. So normally imperative form tends to be like infinitive control. So having the possibility of imperative, second masculine singular, then you also need to always think about infinite control. So now we have kum, bo, sim. So I'm saying that if you have the hollow bob appearing as identical as its uh, lexicon form, then that must be imperative or infinitive control. Do you have any question? Is that clear? Okay, then let's go back to the lesson. So um, let's do this again. Then as you say, this one is shub. <laughs> shub, kai, and what about or infinitive construct. And what about PGN, Ami? No. None. Special feature? Uh, Lamet preposition. Lamet preposition. Meaning? To return. To return. Okay. Okay, and then let's move on to another one. Um, we know that this one is Natan. Okay, quickly. So this one is Natan. I'm gonna ask James to do this. Natan, and would you analyze the stand form? Uh, Carl. Carl? Uh, affix. Affix. What about PGN? Oh, oh. oh ending is quite oh, unique. But is yeah. there any any ending? I mean, pronomen suffix. Affix is some affix pronoun. What is it? Affix pro pronoun. Affix pronoun. Yeah, affix pronoun of the yod. Yes. It doesn't have the yod ending, so it must be a special attachment. So then in this case, just ignore it. And what PGN do you have? Three CPL. Three? Three CPL. Why do you think this is a three CPL? Because of Holland? Yeah. In order I, for this one no. to be three CPL, then it should be Shurek, it's not Holland. Okay, so ignore Holland. And we, we have nothing except Holem, then in this case, just to stay with whatever is given, Natan. So without having anything, then it must indicate three. Three MSG. Yeah, three MSG. We are going to talk about this later, but I think you can do it. Three MSG, and then what about then the specific ending? So we don't have such, um, what is that? Um, uh, 
affix pronoun. Then what is this? This one is pronoun in a suffix, as I said, which is attached to a verb. So suffix, pronoun in a suffix can be attached to a verb. So this one is holem, then what PGN? CMSG. Yes, those ones, so this one should be appearing in your um, chart for special future. So this one, three MSG, pronominal suffix. Meaning? He gave him. He gave him. And how are you going to translate this pronominal suffix? attached to the verb. Normally, it becomes the objective, object. So then you just put it, he gave it uh, or him. You can translate it, okay? Uh, let me move on. I think we are going to, we can just move on to the each slide. And apart from it, we need to be familiar with the usage of demonstrative pronoun jejo to hui ele ele hum hem en. So we have learned about three different cases of putting the uh, in interpretation. Uh, what is it? What was it? We need to see if there is any agreement between this pronoun suffix and the preceding noun in terms of gender number and the definiteness. So if you have the agreement in those three uh, aspects, then you need to simply directly modify the preceding word with this demonstrative pronoun. That's why ha ish ha ze become this man. Okay, I think it's not new. You are supposed to already understand this. So we have actually uh, here, as I said, this one is a combination of ba, be, and definite article ha. So this one is taking definite article he. And this one is also taking definite article he. So you can see that, oh, there is an agreement in terms of definiteness. So the translation should be who he so who means that that day that day so from the beginning together with e, the translation is in that day okay then let's move on so we don't have any problem here so demonstrative pronouns uh, since we don't have here the, the agreements of definiteness, then we need to um, put the translation is uh, tra put the translation like this. This is the man, not this man. Okay. Okay. Let's deal with this. Pronomen suffix plus verb. The first one. You see that this one is, in fact, this one is a combination of these two. So it is meant to be broken down into two components. It is coming with Ishmer and then Otanu. So as you know, that this is DDO. And then we need to talk about Nu. Nu indicates three MSG pronomen suffix as well. So when those things are coming together, we can put these two together. So nu is just appearing directly without DDO marker. And you need to also pay attention to the change in the preceding vowel points. Since we have nu, so it has mo, and then it becomes shua, and then it has nothing, and it needs to carry at least one vowel point. So what happens when a pronomen suffix is uh, attached to a verb, the vowel system will change. And that's why 
today's lesson has a lot to do with the change of the vowel point. When a verb is appearing together with a pronominal uh, suffix. Let's look at this. This one is the shapat. And then this one is kal affix 3 msg. And what if this word needs to carry the ka pronominal suffix, which is ku msg pronominal suffix? You just put it. And what can you see here? Kamets becomes shua. Kata becomes so the vowel point uh, change. So here, normally, it's to shorten normally. Okay. I think this is what you need to understand. Okay, let me... Both grammatically constructions are translated in the same way. The ending of the suffix directly to a verb causes a spelling change in terms of the vowel system. That's it. So talking about the first statement, there is no really big difference between these two, even this one and this one. You know, you can just take this pronominal suffix as if you have that suffix uh, attached to the DDO marker. So uh, it functions as object. Okay. It's not a really difficult one. So let's move on. So now, here we go. This is the thing that we have to memorize. Okay? Look at this. This is, these are all pronominal suffix. So still, ka, k, kem, ken. Second person, Mm, second persons are not really hard. They are always appearing with kaf, okay? And as I told you, you need to pay attention to this. Now look at this. It was supposed to be e, i, e, e. But now it comes with a ni, okay? Uh, yeah, it is type two, an alternative form. So one C, S, G even come, come, come with E or ni. And we have nu, praise the Lord. Now, I told you the nu is indicating 3msg. But how come this nu must be 1cpl? I think this one, uh, I think must be 1cpl. But I, let me just come back to this one later. But let's talk about this. Well, previously, we were simply dealing with O. Right for three MSG, but you have to memorize this one too. So that's why who is what we are having in today's passage, right? So even who is also indicating three MSG of its form. So let's say ni nu and who yo bu, who yo bu, okay? And this specific. He ending and a ending indicate three F S T. Of course, noon, uh, mem and noon. Um, but I think you will find this form. Look at it. I one, and then we have alternative form. So in fact, we used to, we, we had type one and type two, but this one here on the right side is not called type two, but it is called alternating form. So you, you must be familiar with this alternating form as well. So ni, e, ni are all uh, specific ending for one C, S, G. And yo, who, and one more thing, Vav ending indicate three MSG and this is specific uh, he and at ending and ha ending indicates three FSG. Okay, so nu indicates one CPL, but 
Why did I told you that we can even have new ending? Look at this. Noon suffix is appearing in this way as well. As you can see, we have new indicating 3M SC. Uh, I think um, I, I was confused either too. I think it cannot be in, in, in today's passes, it cannot be 3M SG, although we have new, because I think we need to pay attention to this Sego and this Dagesh. So without having Sego and Dagesh, then that must be one C P L. So I think this one is important reminder even to me that if you have new, then prioritize uh, one C P L pronominal suffix. Okay. Pronominal suffix. And if you have dagesh in the noon and then sego in in the preceding uh, syllable, then you can con I mean treat it as a three M S G. So you gotta be careful with new ending. So here, I think a ka ka is not a big problem, but 3M SG is yot, hu, and even va. And you need to even take note of this nu, tegol nu, enu. So let's say enu is 3M SG, but simple nu is 1CPL. Okay? So I'm going to say if you have yo, hu, vu, enu. Yo, hu, vu, enu, they are all indicating 3msg pronomen suffix. Even this 3fsg is supposed to be ending in either a, he, dagesh, or ha. But even this 3fsg can come with another nun, so ena. But anyway, this a ending seems to be related to third person feminine singular. So even a he ending is appearing for 3FSG of this form. So it's not really hard to recognize it, but importantly, it appears with nun. That's why it is called nun suffix. So this is quite, um, let me tell you this. This one is not called uh, alternative form. These are on the right side, Type one, and then these are alternative forms. And we have type two. And here we go. We have nun suffix as well. So you need to be familiar with all those pronominal suffixes. Okay. We are done with this. We are done with this. And we are done with this as well. Uh, but in terms of the meaning, nadan, the, the, what is the most popular meaning of nadan is to give. But there is another meaning, which is permitted, to permit or to allow. So in this case, I think the, the translation, the meaning of permit, permit is more acceptable. But anyway, uh, let's move on. We are done with this as well. So the translation, oh, we don't have new today. Okay, it was who? So you, I was right. So this one is 3MSG. Uh, All right. So it must be 3MSG. So the translation is, and soul took. And then I told you, how are you going to treat the spring nominal suffix who? So then we, we need to treat it as an object. So you're going to say, and he, took him or it. And who is the subject here? The subject is so. So it's a still, it still follows the general pattern that the real subject normally follows uh, the verb. So this three MSG of fix, uh, uh, prefix pronoun indicates so. And so took in that day, and it's just the same. Mm. 
not pan. So he is still um, the subject. So and he gave it or him. But as I said, this one indicates permit. So he permitted him. He permitted him. But what about this? This one is negative law. So although you are not supposed to put this negative meaning in your analysis table, you need to put it as the final translation. So together with the law, then the translation is, and he did not permit him. To what? To return. And then what about this? Beit Abib. As I said, bu ending is what? In, it indicates 3MSG pronominal suffix. So should it be his? What is the meaning of a father? But the question is, why do we have Hirek Jod? Actually, Hirek Jod is a special, just a bridge. But it's not Tere Yod. So you are not supposed to put it as uh, plural. So Hirek Yod is simple bridge because it's a monosyllabic word. So when a monosyllabic word is appearing together with a pronomen suffix, then we normally add one uh, bridge. That's how we could come up with this specific uh, augment here, but nothing new. So what, what is important here is that Vav it indicates three MSG pronoun suffix. So what is that? His father. So the house of his father. Okay, what, what is the translation of this last phrase? To return. The, the literal translation is to return the house of his father. So what is missing here? Directive he. Directive he, or even the preposition L to have the directive uh, meaning, which is two. So we are supposed to have two here, two. But uh, sometimes the place can be simply appearing without uh, any preposition or any com component indicating the direction. So in that case, you simply add the idea of two. So it will, be, it will be determined by the context as well. So it's not really hard for us to put preposition two here. So the return translation is, and Saul took him on that day, and he did not permit him to return to the house of his father, what is the, I think it sounds like the story of David, okay? So King Saul uh, didn't want uh, allow David to return to his father's house. Hey, JB. And Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. And I be, from that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. The idea is the same, but uh, in terms of literal translation, you can see the little difference there. So that's it. That's it. Sir, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, there are the metano, that is a car affix. But we usually distinguish the uh, car affix first letter under the comment. But I here... really appreciate your question. Um, Sharon is pointing out that how come we have yeah. Shua? Yeah, we distinguish Shua yeah, right. yeah, imperative I... or infinitive construct. So okay, how thank can you. we distinguish? Yeah. All right, thank you for the question. I think your question is really, uh, what is it, um, timely as we are about to move to next page. Okay, I'm going to answer your question here. Yeah. 
When a suffix is added to a verb, there can be vocalization changes in the verb. Okay, as you said, Sharon, where are you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me see. Come on. This one is car 3 ms suffix form. And this 3 msc car affix form is attached to 3FSG suffix, as you can see here. Then because of this augment, and then it affects this vowel pointing. And then I, I told you, normally it will be shortened. That's why kamet becomes shua. So now what I'm trying to say is, now you need to make another room for 3MSG of fixed form, especially when this 3MSG of fixed form is attached to a pronominal suffix, then you need to understand that the, 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 what is it? The most expected about pointings will not be appearing as they are because it will affect the vowel pointing. The hint is still you have this pronominal suffix attached to the main verb, okay? So then you need to start thinking about the possibility that, oh, then, the vowel pointing, that the, the, the expected vowel pointing should be changed. That's how you could come up with 3 ms of this form. But to be honest, it's not that easy. Why? Because then how are you going to see the difference between imperative form and uh, this 3 ms of this form? That's when you are um, probably struggling. You can be struggle. You can be struggling. But uh, the context will easily help you to recognize this. But it's good that uh, when a pronoun suffix is attached to a verb, then you just understand that the vocalizations of the vowel point will change. Okay? So to answer your question, Sharon, this argument of three. Uh, no, pronoun suffix affect the vowel system. That's why it's not comment anymore. So now the new lesson that we need to pay attention to is the fact that, okay, when a verb is coming together with pronoun suffix, okay, pronoun suffix, then the, the specific vowel point may not work. Oh. Okay. So all those things are, okay, then um, what about the three MSG, uh, what about the affix form of other PGN? This one, wait, come on. As you can see that 3MSG kind of fixed form is supposed to carry ta ending. And what it happened if we, this one is coming together with another pronominal suffix and you can see that ta must be there. And then simply ni is attached. So now what will happen? One more time, amet becomes shua. But in this case, praise the Lord. Because of the presence of ta ending, you can easily recognize this one as a fixed form. Because what kind of a form can take ta ending after the main verb? A, ta, t, t, u, m, ten, nu. So there is no reason for us to be confused. This one must be to MSG of fixed form attached to this specific 1CSG pronomen suffix. So uh, you can see every, every component except the change of the vowel point. So as long as you understand this, then it will be okay. Move on. 
What about for um, in prefix form? Then, normally, it's the same. Ishmael, and then ni pronoun in a suffix, one CSG, then it affects the vowel system. So, Holland became Shurek here. So, as long as you understand, okay, I have this pronoun in a suffix attached to the main verb, then I need to be flexible with the vowel pointing. And this is what you need to do. That's it. But don't be confused. Why? Because you have prefix pronoun. And you know this one must be prefix form. So there is no reason for you to be confused, actually. Although the vowel system is changed, you can easily recognize this one as prefix form. All right. Um, it's generally speaking, it's the same. So just to be flexible, read the vowel changes when you have a verb attached to a pronoun suffix. Okay. So uh, Elabaya, what is our assignment today? Uh, we have actually we have two assignments. Mm -hmm. So lesson thirty-seven, mm -hmm. page uh, one seventy-nine. Number. Okay, uh, why don't you just reduce a little bit? 179, and how many? Uh, one, two, three, four, five questions, but they are due. One assignment is due tomorrow, the uh -huh. other one is due on Monday. Okay, then the, they yeah. can handle it. All right, yeah. so what are they? One, so, two, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. All right, and then I believe it is posted in the Moodle, right? Yeah, but for number 17, please use the textbook because there's new vocabulary. Okay. So which you, which is not on the PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah, so there's the meaning is given in the textbook, so you can be able to do it. And then uh, for lesson 38, you do uh, number one to six. Page 184, number one to six. They are very short seten sentences. All right. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Do you have any question? Well, look at your textbook again, page 183. Page 183. Number 38.8. Yeah, you can see this one, right? And then I think this is quite important. Now we are talking about um, the vowel changes, especially when verbs are attached to pronoun and suffix, then we really need to uh, practice on this because this is our first time to deal with a case that, you know, these verbs are coming with the pronoun and suffix, then you will be easily confused between, you know, oh, is this, this specific ending for a fixed form or prefix form or pronoun in a suffix? And how are I going to see, you know, those addition? So we need to practice this. Uh, I don't want to give this one uh, to you as an assignment, but I think uh, it's important for us to do this. So uh, probably next Tuesday or uh, tomorrow after our class, if we have uh, enough time, then I want to just deal with this. If you are interested, you know, you are welcome to do this, okay, by yourself. So we are going to do this together. So just to try to be exposure to the cases when, where you are dealing with, you know, um, some verbs attached to pronominal suffixes. So you need to deal with a lot of cases that here, okay? Do you have any question? Yeah, so today's assignment is due Monday, right? No. Lesson, lesson, th lesson 37 is due tomorrow. Yeah. Lesson 37 yeah. is due tomorrow morning. Lesson yeah. 38 is due on Monday. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear? Is that? Yeah, since we couldn't do uh, our class yesterday, 
So we are done with the two lessons. Mm -hmm. So I think um, you will be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, the assignment for lesson 37 is due tomorrow. Yeah. And then you are going to submit another uh, assignment for cert lesson 38 by Monday. Monday. Yes. Okay. So you have the weekend to do it. And or Alabaya, Alabaya, since they are working on those assignments together, mm -hmm. although they are all short, why don't you study, take out just the last one from each? Which one? The last I one. Uh, one, let's say, one. You said on in lesson 37? Yeah. It's, what are the numbers? 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, then let's take out 17. Okay. I want to just reduce one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so remove yeah. 17 only oh, for tomorrow yeah for tomorrow okay and then what about lesson 38 because tomorrow we are Have going you... to give them another assignment oh tomorrow is vocabulary you can do you can do only up to five one to five for lesson yeah, but after dealing with the new lessons they need to have another uh, assignment actually yeah that one will be due on tuesday morning yeah, that's why I'm saying. So you okay, do, take. Let's remove one more. So you can do 38. 38 and 39. You can do it over the weekend, but 38 will be due on Monday. Lesson 39 will be due on Tuesday. Okay, then that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do you have but any I will question? reduce the assignment, but the, those are the due dates. But for tomorrow's assignment, I will not give you a lot. But they are due Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Is that so clear? That you have time to do it. Okay. So uh, you are doing good job. You mm -hmm. are doing good. Yeah. And mm -hmm. to be honest, being a Hebrew teacher, actually, you know, uh, I'm not an Old Testament scholar. So you can see that a lot of times I'm I can be confused as well. And then even Alabaya teacher Alabaya can be confused. You know, nothing to be you know proud of. But what I'm trying to say is. As strong as you understand how those grammatical you know, aspects work, you know, you will be fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we start dealing with the first stem, I'm going to allow you to use your verb chart for your translation quiz because mm -hmm. it's literally impossible for you to memorize everything. Even I can't do that. So what you need to do is to be familiar with all those in the possibilities, okay? So it's a good news. So probably lesson 45 is the first lesson that we need to be with the Nipah. So then I'm going to allow you to use your verb chart for your translation quiz, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a good news for you. Don't give up and then let's move on. I'm gonna see mm -hmm. you tomorrow all. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Alibaya. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, professor, so tomorrow after class?